Have you ever wondered how much information is exchanged in one day? It's a lot. And how much of that information is misinformation? Our students are exposed to so many ads and messages on social media, in the news, and even from their friends and family. And well, so are we. My question is, how much of that information is trustworthy? The Generation Skeptics program is designed to help teachers confront the fire hose of misinformation reaching our students on a daily basis. Our main message is we all fall for misinformation, especially if it aligns with our personal biases, our identities, our lived experiences, etc. Our motto is don't believe everything you believe. Intellectual humility and personal reflection are the keys to protecting ourselves from misinformation. I'd like to feature one lesson from our collection here today. It's called How to Sell Pseudoscience, and it's based on the work of Melanie Teresa King. This t-shirt is hers. She's a creator of Thinking is Power. We introduced the nine most common tactics that scam artists use to sell pseudoscientific products. These tactics are quite common in the multi-billion dollar wellness industry. And like all of our lessons, this lesson comes with free presentation slides, lesson plans, and even some examples of student work from my own classroom here in Miami, Florida. Here's one of those student samples from two of my students. They use some of the typical selling points used to sell supplements that are not FDA approved. For example, they appeal to our inclination to think that whatever is natural is better with phrases like GMO free and certified plant-based. They also use impressive but silly language like this product detoxifies bone marrow at the cellular level, whatever that means. They also appeal to fake experts, another common tactic or to say that it's used by millions. Are you familiar with any of these tactics? This activity is really engaging. I mean, I could have walked out of my classroom and the students wouldn't have noticed, but I didn't, I did not. This activity, well, it's like a mental inoculation. It's my hope that the next time my students encounter an ad for so-called wellness products, they may consider looking at some peer reviewed evidence for its effectiveness before hitting the purchase button. My rule of thumb, I tell my students, don't take medical advice from someone who's trying to tell you, sell you something. If this sounds like something you want to try in your classroom, check out our website. We have dozens of lessons aimed at practicing our skeptical thinking skills. For example, maybe it's a good idea for students to compare how long it takes an FDA approved medicine to get on the market versus non, a non-FDA supplement. And remember, let's consider that none of us should believe everything we believe.